In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that, being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. A great crowd who had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. They took branches off the palm trees and went out to meet him crying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young ass and sat upon it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming, sitting on an ass's colt. His disciples did not understand this at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that this had been written of him and had been done to him. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, in order to celebrate worthily the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. You are the Son of God and the Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. You are the Word made flesh, the splendour of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who, as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Saviour to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed this lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue, so that I may know how to reply to the wearied. He provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheek to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help, so that I am untouched by the insults. So too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The word of the Lord. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him save him. Let him release him, if this is his friend. Many dogs have surrounded me. A band of the wicked beset me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. 
I can count every one of my bones. They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. O Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength, make haste to help me. I will tell of your name to my brethren and praise you where they are assembled. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All sons of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, Israel's sons. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave, and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbly yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth, and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Christ was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him on high, and gave him the name which is above all names. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. First thing in the morning, the chief priests, together with the elders and the scribes, in short, the whole Sanhedrin had their plan ready. They had Jesus bound and took him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? It is you who say it, he answered. And the chief priests brought many accusations against him. Pilate questioned him again, Have you no reply at all? See how many accusations they are bringing against you. But to Pilate's amazement, Jesus made no further reply. At festival time, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone they asked for. Now a man called Barabbas was then in prison with the rioters who had committed murder during the uprising. When the crowd went up and began to ask Pilate the customary favour, Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realised it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over. The chief priests, however, had incited the crowd to demand that he should release Barabbas for them instead. Then Pilate spoke again. But in that case, he said to them, What am I to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Why, Pilate asked, what harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, anxious to placate the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and, having ordered Jesus to be scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away to the inner part of the palace, that is, the praetorium, and called the whole cohort together. They dressed him up in purple, twisted some thorns into a crown and put it to him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed and spat on him, and they went down on their knees to do him homage. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the purple and dressed him in his own clothes. They led him out to crucify him. They enlisted a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus, who was coming in from the country, to carry his cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he refused it. Then they crucified him and shared out his clothing, casting lots to decide what each should get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The inscription giving the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And they crucified two robbers with him, 
one on his right and one on his left. Uh, the passers-by jeered at him. They shook their heads and said, Aha, so you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Then save yourself, come down from the cross. The chief priests and the scribes mocked him among themselves in the same way. He saved others, they said. Can he not save himself? Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now for us to see it and believe. Even those who were crucified with him taunted him. When the sixth hour came, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood by heard this, they said, listen, he is calling on Elijah. Some ran and soaked a sponge in vinegar and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink, saying, wait and see if Elijah will come to take him down. But Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The centurion who was standing in front of him had seen how he had died and said, In truth, this man was a son of God. There were some women watching from a distance. Among them were Mary of Magdala, Mary who was the mother of James the Younger, and Joseph and Salome. They, these used to follow him and look after him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women there who had come up to Jerusalem with him. It was now evening, and since it was preparation day, that is, the vigil of the Sabbath, there came Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who himself lived in the hope of seeing the kingdom of God, and he boldly went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate, astonished that he should have died so soon, summoned the centurion and inquired if he was already dead. Having been assured of this by the centurion, he granted the corpse to Joseph, who brought a shroud, took Jesus down from the cross, wrapped him in the shroud and laid him in a tomb, which had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary of Magdala and Mary, the mother of Joseph, were watching and took note of where he was laid. Please be seated. There is a school that is not very popular, but made compulsory by life. A school that all of us have to attend sooner or later. It's a school of suffering. It is the school of those times of life from which we cannot escape. Those harsh moments that we judge as useless and wasted. However, these moments of suffering can also be moments that allow us to grow. The entrance into Holy Week constitutes the very beginning of the school of suffering and opens a path for us that allows us to reread these times of suffering that we're all called to go through from time to time. It's no coincidence that the very first reading we heard Isaiah chapter 50 speaks to us of a suffering servant, a servant who becomes a disciple, and a disciple is somebody who learns from a teacher. God is the teacher who opens the disciple's ear every morning and teaches him to become a servant. 
a path that passes precisely through the acceptance of suffering that we all have in our lives. But the Lord is also a teacher who does not leave his disciple alone. He assists him precisely because he knows the weakness of the disciple. He knows the weakness of each and every one of us and knows that we need to be accompanied. The second reading, the letter to the Philippians, also reminds us that it is Jesus who first becomes a servant and enters into that school of suffering. He assumes the condition of a servant and becomes obedient until death. Suffering is not an accident of the journey, but rather we must see it as an occasion of grace, a trial, a moment in which we can grow in relationship with our God. Between these two readings is placed Psalm 21, of which Jesus will reference while he's on the cross. In suffering, our trust in God is tested. Those of us who suffer, truly suffer, feel alone because we realize that no one can fully understand our suffering. Suffering is always personal. It's never the same for one person or another. And for this reason, the Lord himself also experience this loneliness of suffering, a loneliness which therefore asks us to abandon ourselves in the arms of the Father at every moment in which we feel abandoned. It's Jesus' handing himself over to us on the cross where he fully completes what he already anticipated in the upper room, where Jesus says to his disciples, this is my body. The great effort asked of us is a willingness, a perseverance to stay in this suffering. Because when we're confronted with suffering, we always want to flee. We always want to escape from it. While Jesus hands himself over for us, Judas, on the other hand, thinks he's avoiding suffering. He hands over the other person, Jesus, rather than himself. But we know the greater suffering that that causes Judas. It is the person who deludes themselves into thinking they can avoid their own suffering and trying to put it on to another. Each and every one of us has excuses or scapegoats which we can hand over. But as the story of Judas shows us, in reality, every one of us, sooner or later, will confront suffering without being able to avoid it. And that's fine, because suffering frightens us, because we see it as a waste. We'd like to use our time and energy for other projects elsewhere. Suffering is like that cracked alabaster jar. It seems useless, an excessive and meaningless gesture. And yet Jesus suggests that we learn precisely from the gesture of that woman where the disciples around him are wanting him to sell the ointment and give it to the poor. Suffering is also a moment of truth. We have all learned that when we are suffering, our relationships with other people are shown as they really are. There are in fact, sadly, those who abandon us when we suffer and leave us alone. There are those, like in the garden, who want to confront suffering with the violence of the sword. There are those who want to take the advantage of suffering. There are those that shout aloud and make a great storm, but do very little to relieve suffering. There are those that become exasperated by our suffering and quickly abandon us. And there are even those people who enjoy playing with our suffering. If you really want to get to know a person, watch them in the face of your own suffering. In our suffering, there are also those who, like Simon of Cyrene, are involved despite of themselves. Because, and this is what I ask of the parish community, 
Suffering, or as asked of every Christian in fact, suffering is never ours alone. It does not remain locked up in our own personal container, but our suffering inevitably affects those that are around us, those that love us. Hopefully, you're the one of those people that remain under the cross of others and do not turn away and abandon them. There are even those who, faced with the suffering of the other, find courage that they did not think they had. Like Joseph of Arimathea, remember the gospel passage we've just heard describes him as boldly going to ask Pilate. Joseph risks himself going to ask for the body of Jesus. Courage is one of the fruits of suffering. There is a stone that apparently seems to put an end to the story that we've just heard. But instead, the suffering of our Lord has set in motion a path, a river of love that does not stop. Jesus reminded us of this several times, but we do not always remember his words. The grain of wheat is enveloped in the earth, but very soon it will blossom and the harvest will be abundant. And then finally, we will be able to rejoice. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. There's just a couple of announcements. There will be um, a weekday Mass on Tuesday, so there's an opportunity to come to Mass in Holy Week if everything's already booked. And also on Wednesday evening, and check the bulletin, I'm pretty sure it's 7 till 8, there will be confessions available. So if you want to go to confession during Holy Week, there is a service or the opportunity of confession um, between 7 and 8. Wednesday evening. The palms that have been blessed will be distributed at the end of Mass in the car park and there will be a steward that hands one over to you. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In this time of the Lord's Passion, when Christ offered prayers and supplications to his Father with loud cries and tears, let us humbly beseech God that in answer to his Son's reverent submission, he may in mercy hear our prayers also. That the Church, the Bride of Christ, may be more fully cleansed by his blood in this time of his Passion. Lord, in your mercy, that through the blood of Christ's cross, all things in the world may be brought to peace for the sake of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. that God may grant fortitude and patience to all through sickness or hardship, have a share in Christ's passion. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. that we may all be led through the Lord's passion and cross to the glory of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, and we join our prayers to our ladies as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Be present, O Lord, to your people at prayer, so that what they do not have the confidence or presumption to ask, they may, they may obtain by the merits of your Son's passion, 
who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Marcus our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, the Spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Father, if this chalice cannot pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Let us pray. Nourished by these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The body of Christ. 